Hello and welcome. Thanks for popping into my channel. If you are new here, please like and subscribe for me. If you find this content helpful, smash that notification bell so that you don't miss out on the next video. Comment below with anything that you need help with or topics you'd like me to cover and check out my website, consultingninja.tech. With that out of the way, let's get right to it. I'm gonna show you guys one of the coolest pieces of Svelte Kit, and that is creating your own API right in Svelte Kit. Yes, you can do that, and yes, it's awesome. <laughs> so let's go take a look. I have this skeleton application. I've not done anything in here except add a little bit of styling. Inside of routes, what we need to do is create a new folder and call this API. You can call it whatever you'd like, but API is good because then you can add the slash API on your ping. And then let's just make one called git. And then inside of git, let's make a new folder, new file, sorry, and that's plus server.js. And what we're going to do in here, anywhere that you have this plus server, you can add in, and this is just plus server, no page, no anything else, just plus server.js. And then you can just export const and then whatever verb, backend verb, so git post, put, delete, all of those backend actions, you can just export them like this. Export const, get, assign function, like that. And then what we're going to return is a new response, like that. Now let's just give that a save, just like that plain Jane. I have the backend up and running. And then I'm gonna open up Postman Postman is just a tool for pinging your backend uh, to get responses. So just like we would use this for a Node.js backend, we can use this for our SvelteKit backend. And then one of the cool things about this is like we are going to be pinging our own um, our own origin with the same port and everything. So that's pretty cool. And if I send this, you'll see that well we didn't we didn't send anything back, but you see that we get a status OK. So if I go in here and I then add some stuff let's add some stuff let's add a let's add an object json.stringify say my cool git and data from my git like that give that a save and then i ping that back end again you can see what i get is my cool git i get that json object with the data from my uh, git request and if you wanted to this takes an optional parameter right here where you can set status and things of that nature so you can cut set a custom status let's say we wanted you know 201 or 202 and let's give that a save and now if i ping uh, then you'll see that that status is exactly what i set there so that's pretty cool and you can ping this from your load functions. So this is essentially a REST API that's running alongside of your front end, although this is the back end. Uh, this does not run on the client. And you can ping this from your front end, easy peasy, no problems. So this is really cool stuff. I really, <laughs> I really think this is awesome. So that's how we do a GET request. What if we wanted to do a POST? So inside of API, Let's add a new folder and just call this post. And then inside of post, let's make another new file called plus server.js. And then we can copy, I'll just go ahead and copy this and just change this to post. And then let's add in an async here because we're gonna do some stuff. And then inside of here, pull out the request. And what we want to do is let's say const my body is equal to await request.json like that. And here, actually, let's before we let's change this to my cool post. And then here, let's add in my body like that so we can get that back and this will change back to just a 200 
So give that a save. Let's go to our postman and let's create a new request. This one will be a post like that. And then inside of body, we want raw. And then here we drop this down to JSON and then we can set a custom object here. Let's just say my awesome data is equal to my API backend post. And then what we're going to do is we're going to ping that same HTTP. We're going to ping our backend, same spot, localhost 5173 slash API, but this time we're going to say post. And we're sending a post request and we have our data and go ahead and send that. And then you'll see what we get back is the response, my cool post, an object that we stringified. And then as the property, as the value of that property, we're getting back uh, the JSON that we sent it. And you can take this and do whatever you want inside here. So you can um, make public API requests in here. You can, everything that you can do in a normal backend, you can do in here as well. So this is pretty cool. You also can set custom headers. We can look at headers. Let's, let's go ahead and do that. Let's do a const header, uh, my header equals request.header.get and we are going to get my custom header because why not? I, wanna, I want a custom header. And then here inside of what we're sending back, let's put that header, my header. So we can see what we're sending from Postman back. And here, let's, uh, we can get rid of that. We don't have to send that or leave it, whatever. I guess it doesn't matter. But inside of headers, we can just come add another one. And you can just click inside here to add the key, which was my, what did we call that? You can copy and paste that my custom header. This is how you pull a, any of the headers out. You you pull the actual uh, what you the actual name of it. So just like you would an object, my custom header, and then whatever value you want. Sweet, <laughs> I'm adding custom headers. That is actually requires an S. It's uh, headers. <laughs> Request dot headers dot get. And then there we can ping. And here we get back the custom header that we sent. So when you're pinging your own API, if you wanted to, you could uh, add a custom header and then check for that in your API. So here you could say, you know, if this doesn't exist. So here you could do a little check if my header or if not my header, if not my header, uh, then you know, return a different response, return new response, and let's say json.stringify, and what we're going to send is error, you are not what I expected. I expected. Give that a save, and now, if we pull that header out, so let's go ahead and delete that header, and there should be a delete Delete there, and now if we send, we should get an error. And there it is, you are not what I expected. So you can add in a custom header uh, when you're pinging your API. And if that header is not there, then you can return a different response. So that's something cool that is helpful. So this is the basics of setting up a SvelteKit API. Inside of your routes, you just add a folder. I usually, I call mine API, so you can use you know that standard of slash API and then what route on that API you're, hit, you're hitting. And then you just inside of your plus server.js files, you just put your backend verbs, your methods that you're wanting to use, your git, your posts, um, and all of the others are available. And then you do whatever it is that you wanna do. So I wanna make sure that I show you guys how it is that we access this data. So what you would do is inside of your load functions, let's create one. So our, in our base routes for our home page, let's make new file plus page.server.js. And we're going to export 
async function load and we have to make sure to pass along fetch because we're going to do a fetch request and what we're going to do is const response equals await fetch and we're pinging our own back end so localhost port 5173 slash api slash git and then we can take that response uh, I will point out we are doing async await so you would want to wrap this in a try catch try uh, to make sure to get your error so for simplicity's sake, I'll leave that out, but I want to point that out. That's oftentimes left out in videos like this. I, I don't want to leave you guys hanging. Uh, when you're using async await and you're not using the dot then, make sure you try catch so that you don't miss an error. So then we take our response and const data equals await response.json like that. And then we need to return an object because we are using a load function. And this will be data.mycoolgit because that's what we called it in our, um, in our git. That's the property name that we're sending back here. And then we give that a save. And now inside of our plus page.svelte, we need to make sure that we have a script. So script. And then inside of here, export let data like that and now let's just copy this h1 and inside of here let's do data dot data data from my git and then remember inside of our plus page dot svelte um, we have to have the data dot data because data is the svelte kit built in um, but our load function is returning an object and the property is called data. So that's why you need the data.data. .data. Uh, and I am pulling out the property here so that we don't have data.data.data. Uh, .data .data. <laughs> that would start to get confusing. But here is the load function pulling the data that we're getting from our own API. So we have this API that's running in parallel. On our load, we are pinging our own API to get that data. And that's how we access it inside of our plus page dots felt. Thank you guys. I hope that you found this video helpful. If you did, please give that thumbs up. And as always, have a great day. Mm -hmm.